Who wants to tell us what we can do first to solve this equation? Brandon. Minus five. Minus five. Minus five. So we have three x. Nothing left over here, just three x. Negative four minus five is negative nine. Now we have x is on one side, x is on the other side. But only one of the sides has just x's. That's kind of a good thing. Anybody besides Brandon want to take a crack at it? Maddie? Very good, very good. Minus 7x on both sides. 3x minus 7x is negative 4x. And on the other side, we just have negative 9. Writing 2.25, 2.25, that's fine. It is equal to the answer, right? Don't share, no sharing. Right, Kelly? What? If your answer were something like one third, do not answer 0.3. Okay. What is the decimal version of one third? It's not 0.3. Point zero. Zero point. It is well, it was 0 0.3. I wouldn't put it up there if it was just completely wrong. What's that? 3.0. What is it? 3 repeating. 0.3 repeating. Right? I cannot. Yeah, you can write. We can sit there and there you go. If you wrote a thousand threes, it'd still be wrong. It would still be rounded as a thousand three, right? Like that. Or just write one third. Fractions are fine. Not scary. Simplified. This is not simplified. This is not any simpler than this. Okay. Give you uh, a few moments to do your best on that one, and then we will work on it together. Okay, even if we're not done yet, what can we do first? Kelly. Uh, distribute. Perfect. Distribute the 2, we get 2x plus 6 plus 2 equals 4x plus 8. Next, Allie? Add 6 and 2. Combine like terms, we get 8 there equals 4x plus 8. Cole? What were you saying? <laughs> never mind. You got a question, Cole. It's okay to ask a question. Go ahead. Well, I was going to answer, but never mind. I don't know how to do it. Okay. Uh, Cody. I have a question. If question. we both equal the same thing, if 2x plus 8 equals 4x plus 8, mm -hmm. wouldn't you have, you would subtract the uh, normal, if you subtract 8 from each side, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if this were me and this was a 9 instead of an 8, I would subtract 8 from both sides, or subtract 9 from both sides. Let's see. We need to choose one side to cancel the, the constant on. And it turns out when we subtract 8 from this side, we cancel out the 8 on the other side. If we were to look at this side and say, hey, we cancel out this 8 and subtract 8, we happen to cancel out the 8 on the other side. Right? So we just get 2x equals 4x. Right? There's only one way for this to work. And we'll find it by you know, following the, the same steps we always follow. Kelly? You divide. Two, like not do that right. Okay. We got x's on both sides. I want to, I mean, we can make that work. It's just, in all the years of teaching, when I do that, and I'm just like, okay, we'll do that, it confuses people. Okay. It's just not the thing that I would recommend you do at this step. This step, I would recommend something else when we have variables on both sides. Mac? Would you minus 2x for me? That's what I would do. Oh. You get x's all on one side together before I do any divide. On this side, you get zero. And so, x equals two. x equals two? Divide by two? Yeah. That's certainly a good idea. And x, it must be zero divided by two. 
zero. That's the only way that something plus eight could be equal to something else plus eight. You have to only, you have to add zero to eight for that to work. Allie? All right. Video will be up by the end of the day. If you missed something, you can do that. I'm trying to get through this quickly so that we have also time to work on our preview packets. Okay, first things first. A lot of different things to be first. What's first? What do you do? What do you do? It's your choice. <laughs> What'd you say to do with them? Or add, no, like the minus the x. Minus the 3x from the 7. Yeah. yeah, so we're just combining like terms, right? Yeah. So that gives us 4x minus 5 equals 2x plus 5. Very good for step, Hallie. Um, I subtracted 5. Yeah, what makes these kind of tough to follow because subtracting 5 is something you could do first. But it said do this and it's perfectly fine. So just uh, try and follow along and we'll just kind of see if no, we... No, like right now. Huh? Like right now. Oh, right now. You subtracted 5 right now. Okay, you subtracted 5 right now. So 4x, negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10. 2x plus 5 minus 5, so we just have 2x. Okay. Okay. Would you minus 2x from... Four. You could, but in that case, you're going to wind up with everything on one side and zero on the other. What I'd like to have is x's on one side, numbers you, on the other would side. Would you divide it? No, I would not. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, Tyler? Um, plus 10 to 2x. Okay. And then also, uh, we can do that. What I would do, if, that, if I were looking at the equation to do the fewest number of steps, I would have subtracted 4x from both sides. 4x equals 2x plus 10. Oh, yeah. and, then, and then 2x minus 4x. I would subtract 2x right now. Because I want the numbers to be on one side by themselves. I want to get rid of the con the, uh, the variable parts that are over there with the, the constant. So I'll subtract 2x. It gives me 2x equals 5. Or sorry, 2x ten. equals 10. About the answer too quickly. Two divided by two on both sides. So it's like zero dollars. So two x divided by two is x. And Ten divided by two is five. So x is five. Yes, I got it right. Now there's there's so much stuff going on there. You could have done a lot of things in a different order. Okay, you could have done this in uh, a couple fewer steps. You could have. Uh, you could have subtracted 5 from the beginning. You could have added 5 from the beginning. You could have subtracted 2x from the beginning, which I think is what the last class chose to do, subtract 2x from the very beginning. There's so many different ways to go, right? But if we all wind up back in 5, as long as what we did is not guessing, then we should be fine. If you guess the answer on the quest, you will get partial credit, not full credit. You need to practice the algebra. <laughs> Is that algebra. Here we go. We're going to solve for x. Now we have a w in there. Our answer is going to have a w left over in it. But we have 3x plus something equals something. We've seen that plenty of times. Plenty of times. We're going to do the same two steps right now that we would do regardless of what was being added, what was being multiplied by x. So what would we do first? Um, minus 6w. Absolutely. I'm going to cancel out the things being added to the 3x, so we'll subtract that thing out of there. 3x equals, well, 12 minus 6w. There's no way to combine those. They're not like terms, so they just stay as 12 minus 6w. This last thing that we do is the same as we do every time. Divide by 3. Divide by 3, right? We do a lot of dividing by the thing that's multiplied by x. And no different this time. You can write 12 minus 6w over 3. That's correct. But also, I can divide 12 by 3 and get 4. Negative 6w by 3, you get negative 2w. That's a lot nicer.
answer, like linear. Just because 12 and 6 happen to be divisible by 3, if they weren't, then maybe you wouldn't do that. That's it. So you can't um, on the test. Okay, if you do that, but we definitely want to. Yeah. Next step, that's where we want to be. So, if you get here pretty confidently, take it to the next step. Divide each of those things by three. All right, so y equals three x plus two. So our graphing is getting better, but it needs to get even better. All right, so let's you know, practice this several times today. And there's more on the preview, more practices you can do. So I'll quickly just say, if you're not sure how all this uh, y-intercept slope stuff is working, then you can always go back. If you're, I mean, any graph, any graph at all, you can always fall back on what? Minus Canceling it out with. What do you mean by canceling it out? Just getting x on the side. Well, no. We want, what we want to do when we graph is get points, right? This point and this point. Oh yeah. So we get several points. How do we get those points? Kind of like the old school way. Cody's giving me the. I just think he's telling me to either steal second or he's telling me to plug in zero for x. Okay. So. Plug, in zero, plug things in for x and get out the y, and you have a point. Right? It's as basic as it gets. As basic as it gets. But we want to, if, if we want our graphing lives, our graphing careers to be a little more quick, a little more smooth, we can learn the shortcuts. Okay? We don't want to forget about this. We don't want to pretend like this never happened. Okay? It's the basis of, what, of, of graphing. But we just notice these patterns. Every time I plug in zero to this kind of an equation, I just get this little guy right here that's left over, right? Zero plus two, we get two. Okay? And then I'm going to plug in something else for x. What am I going to plug in for x? One. Sure. One, because there's no denominator here, right? So I might as well plug in just a, a quick, easy number. Anything times one is itself. That makes five. it pretty simple. And we get five. Okay? So I move over one, and I move up how much? Well, from here, not from here, but from here. One, two, three. Moved over one, and moved up one, two, three. This is three over one, right? I can move to the right one, and move up three. If that sounds too crazy, too foreign, then absolutely go back and just plug things in for x, get those points accurately, and graph them and you know draw the line. But you know, when we get to graphing things like parabolas, you're definitely going to want to be able to, to grasp these kinds of short cases, okay? And understanding the y-intercept and the slope also helps us understand things like, hey, this two could represent that I started with two dollars. Right? This could represent that I start with two dollars, and this three could represent what? I'm going to start with $2 at 3 What could that represent? $3. $3. Every day. Every day. $2 every day. $2 every hour. $3 every whatever. $3. It doesn't even have to be time. It could be $3 every... Uh, well, there's still time, but like it could be $3 for every... Soup can. A, I get on my report card. Or a soup can. That's a really expensive soup can, but that definitely works, okay? Rich people yeah. could be three dollars per yeah, three soup. Uh, three dollars for every whatever, okay? Three dollars an a, three dollars a soup can, three dollars a person, three dollars a ticket, three dollars a seat, three dollars a whatever, okay? A rate. Right? And understanding that y-intercept and that slope helps us understand it as like a starting point and as a rate, and those are important to graph. But we have those two points, this. I'm going to draw all the rest of the points, right? I just drew the rest of the points. How many points did I just draw? Like a thousand. Like an infinite. infinite number of points, right? That's what this line is made of, an infinite number of points. Okay? To use 
an old analogy we've been using quite a bit, filling up a container. How, what, what would this equation say about this container, what's going on with it? But it starts out. It starts out at three. So let's say there's three inches of water already in it. And so then every five seconds it goes up to seven. Well, this is going to represent, right, x is typically going to represent our time. So this is going to represent time in seconds. Okay. This is going to represent inches. Starts out at three inches. If we were still going to plug things in for x, we would find out that at zero seconds, x is seconds, we have three inches. Just before we even start, three inches. Right. Now, if I were going to just continue to plug things in for x that make life easier, what would you plug in for x at this point? One. You already did zero. You would plug in 14. seven. Seven, 14. Oops. But I think seven's a little um, better just because yeah. it's smaller. So we plug in seven, right? Seven for x, not five. No. Not five. Seven, because seven is going to divide the seven, and they're going to cancel each other out and become a one. Right? And we add three to the five that's left over, and we get eight. So you want to plug in right? seven, and, and keep in mind what I'm plugging in seven for is x. I'm plugging in seven for x. And x, what's x horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Uh, Vertical. Horizontal. No, this one. This way. This way. This way. Horizontal. Horizontal. Which way is way? <laughs> horizontal. Vertical. X is horizontal. So when I plug in 7 for X, I'm saying 7 on the horizontal axis. Okay? So I'm moving over to 7. Moving over to 7. If I'm at 3 right now, then I'm going to wind up adding 5 more. I'm going to be adding on five more. So I move over to seven, and I go up five more. One, two, three, four, five. That puts me at eight. Right. Every, if we think about it as a, as a glass being filled, every seven seconds, we see five inches be added. Seven seconds, five inches, right? Seven seconds, horizontal, five inches, vertical. This much, because this is the number that we want to have cancel with. X and X is horizontal, so this is horizontal. Horizontal, horizontal. This cancels with the horizontal, so it's horizontal. It's not vertical, it's horizontal. This thing in the denominator is telling us to move that much. Which way? Horizontally. Okay, horizontal, <laughs> vertical. Horizontal, because that's what cancels it. The x and x is horizontal. Horizontal, vertical. Okay, next one. Stop. So now we start at negative 1. Okay, and I don't want you to just think like, oh, negative 1. That just means that there's a point there. We still know... We know that there's a point at negative 1 because I just quickly plug in x, 0 for x, 0 for x. This goes away, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So I know we're going to start out when x is 0, y is going to be negative 1. Okay. We could think of this as, uh, like, let's say this is the ground, and we dig down an inch. Right? Dig down 1 inch, that's a negative 1. And we plant a seed. Okay. That's how we could start out negative one or one inch below the ground. Right. And then every four, let's say, weeks, it grows three inches. Okay, just making this stuff up as they go along. So every four weeks, it grows three inches. So in four weeks, how tall is it going to be? It's three inches. Three inches taller than it was, and when did it, right? So it started out at how tall? Negative one. Right. It started out one inch into the ground. 
So four weeks later, how much is it going to grow? Four weeks later, it's going to grow how much? It's three inches. Three inches. One, two, three inches. It's going to be two inches tall. Right? One of those inches was just getting to the surface of the earth. So one, two, three, four weeks later, it grows one, two, three inches. Horizontal, vertical. Horizontal and vertical. Horizontal. We move horizontally four, vertically three. We can move horizontally four. Four weeks later, it'll grow another three inches. One, two, three more inches. Four weeks later, it'll grow another three inches. Just keeps doing that for as long as we want to graph this. Emphasizing this over and over and over because on your uh, on your homework reviews I'm seeing things like uh, you're going three horizontal and four vertical or you're going left and you should go right and all those kinds of things. Follow the signs, the positive and negative signs, horizontally and vertically. Okay. Now, uh, two fifths x plus six. Should you just guys give this a try yourself on your notes. Okay, I'm using this uh, short kind of. I'm using the y-intercept and the slope. Then I put, put my first point on the y-axis and where would I put it? Six. At six. Okay. No, it's at six. And then every five seconds you go to. And good. Every five seconds you go into the future. If you want to think of the x a second, which is a, a perfectly good little trick to use. Okay. Every five seconds that go by, you add two. Inches. Eight. Two, yes. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mark, you got a haircut. We can, you know, if, if we ever forget, or if anybody ever asks us, like, how do you know that? This just seems like cheap. You can say, well, watch this. Watch. First, I'm just going to plug in things for x. That's, that makes perfect sense. Let's assume that person gets that we plug in things for x and get things for y. Holly, what would you plug in for x to help them? Five? Zero. Let's start with zero real quick. Okay. Zero, and then five. So zero, well, have the person plug in zero, and they'll get zero plus six is six. So you can really quickly see that, I think that's the easiest thing to see, that there's a point on the y-axis at six. Because when you plug in zero, all that's left over is this guy. Yeah. So then we plug in five, just like Kelly yes. said. And so the person's going to plug in five. Plug in five. Here, well, five divides five, and we just wind up with two. Right, we're gonna add two to the six that we were just at, right? We started at six. When we go to five, we add on two more. Eight. If we were to go five more, one, two, three, four, five more, we go up. Four more. If I go another five, that's ten. If I go another five, that's ten. I go. And then How'd you get 11? Uh, 5 times 4 is 10. 5 times 4 is 5. And my brain is 5 plus 7 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 5 is 10. And 10 divided by 5 is 2. Wait, I thought it went up by 2. What? It does. It went up by 1. What happened to 5 times 1? 5 times 1 is 5. Why did 5 divided by 5? And 5 times 1 is 5. If I were to not cancel those out, I would just get 2 times 5 is 10 over 5 times 1 is 5. Now 10 divided by 5 is 2, so plus 6 is 8. If I were to go 5 more, I'm at 10, then I wouldn't add on 2, I would just add on 4, right? Which is two twos. I go up 2 and I go up 2 again. So the 5 is 10, you get 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 6 is 10. I plug in 10, I have 10. That's just the same as going over 5 and go up 2 more. We've graphed so many lines, we can see that there is this pattern of we can go over some, and up some, and just keep following that pattern just like a staircase over, up, over, up. Just 
graph millions and billions and trillions of points just now by drawing that line. Infinite number of points. Okay. So now we have a negative, right? We have a negative slope. Well, what's going to be the main difference in the way this line looks compared to the lines we've drawn these last four or five lines? Cool. It's going to go that way. That way. The dot or the points are going to go that way. If the points went that way, from your perspective, right? Yeah, but into the negative side. Then we would actually get a line just like this. Up, one, two, going triangle backwards. Look, these lines go like this. I mean, the points should be in the negative then. Wait, what? See how these points are going down and to the left, just like you motion? Yeah. And they have a positive slope. Positive. Thank you. Right. Every time we go into the future, like five seconds, it goes up two inches. Right? So if we have a negative slope, we should see the line go this way, right? Okay. Every time this, you know, whatever seconds go by, then we should lose something. Right? Oh, okay. That's how we have a negative rate. That's how, like, if this was four, negative four seconds, Negative four sevenths miles per hour. That would be terrible. Be slow. <laughs> You're going backwards, right? You're going backwards. You're losing distance. If this was negative four sevenths of a dollar every hour, yep. every time seven hours goes by, four. you lose four dollars. Oh. Wait, so you would go down or up? Down. down. We're losing. It's decreasing. We're seeing less every time time goes by. Yeah. We can see it as um, uh, somebody used this analogy last class. Okay, let's say we are going to dig a, uh, a hole, but we have to get this hill of dirt out of the way first. How tall is this hill of dirt? According to this equation, how tall is this hill of dirt to start with? Seven. Two. Seven. Two. For what compels you guys to like make it harder for yourselves to pay attention? Really like so it starts out. I mean, even three quarters of a second after I tell you you shouldn't do it, you do it again. Is this what it's gonna be like? When my like, kids get this old? Probably. Like, Probably. You don't do that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they do right now at three and five. One, but I don't think that's fair to judge on it. One. But still, you tell them, don't do that, you do it right away. Last night, you're sleeping. Sleeping. I say, hey, be quiet up there. Immediately, three quarters of a second later, being very not quiet. So I don't know. It just continues into teenager dumb, I guess. Two inches is how tall this hill is. We gotta get that stuff out of the way before you can get to the ground and start digging down into the ground, right? So it starts off at two inches. Then, let's say a uh, number of seconds later. How many seconds later? Seven. Uh, seven, seven. seven seconds later. Seven seconds. Every seven seconds, what happens? It goes down four inches. It goes yeah. down four inches. So seven seconds go by. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds, and now we've dug down four inches, which means we're now two inches below the ground. Oh, below the surface. Oh, yeah. Another seven seconds go by. We dig another four inches into the ground. Another seven seconds goes by. Another four inches into the ground. Right? That's how we can show it's negative. It's going down into the ground. I'm sure. Yeah. Down into the ground. <laughs> It doesn't have to be seconds and inches. It can be seven of anything. It's just that they will be represented as x's. They'll be represented horizontally. We move horizontally seven. And now since this is negative, we move down four. Horizontal and vertical. Horizontal and vertical. We can make the horizontal negative, but then the vertical becomes positive. We can move, move back seven and move up four, and if my line were any better, it would go right through that point right there. In fact, I'll fix it now. Here, there we go. 
confused about what? Confused by Jane. What? Confused by Jane or me? No. So, starts out at two inches, seven seconds into the future, we move down four inches, seven seconds after that, we move down four more inches, that's our slope of our line. That's how the rate, right, it's a rate right here, translates to the slope here. This is a rate of negative four seconds, this is a slope of negative four seconds. Seven horizontally, and negative four vertically. Or you can put that negative with the denominator, and you can go negative seven horizontally, that would mean left, and then go four vertically in the positive direction. Graphing, also interpreting what the slope means, interpreting what the y-intercept means. 